back in 1993, I took a group of pilgrims to Egypt and the Holy Land. It was about 40 of us, and you know, we went to Egypt, and we went to Cairo, and saw the Great Pyramids, went to the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens, went to the Cairo Museum and saw the treasure of King Tut. It was a wonderful trip. Along the way, we ended up in a couple of stores, because despite the fact that it's supposed to be a holy pilgrimage, that doesn't mean we're not going to go shopping. And so, you know, I'm forced to do something that really is not my first choice of how I want to spend my time, as some of you know. But along the way, you know, there are things that you get only in some places in the world. And one of the things that I brought back with me were three or four icons painted on papyrus, which is a plant that grows in Egypt that is the original paper that was created by the Egyptians when they developed their writing. In fact, if you go into the reconciliation room, you don't have to wait till Saturday to do that. Um, there's one hanging on the wall of the Blessed Mother, and, and she's depicted as an Egyptian woman, which is, again, a wonderful thing. I, I really love that icon. In any case, one of the things that I did when I was in the store is they have, and it's again something that's unique to Egypt, you can buy something called a cartouche, which is a, a elongated oval, and in it, a name. You know, if you read papyri, you can see that whenever there's a name, it's always in what's called a cartouche. Well, they make jewelry now that are cartouches. And they come in large, medium, and small, in silver and in gold. And so I decided, well, I would buy a couple of them for my two sisters in silver. And her, their names were written in hieroglyphics in this cartouche. That was pretty nice. For my older sister, it wasn't too bad. Her name was Lynn. For my younger sister, it was a little more expensive. Her name was Mariana. <laughs> and then I wanted to buy one for my mom. And I thought, well, I'll, you know, well, what are the gold ones? How are they priced? And the guy behind the counter starts telling me. And he, of course, brings out the large one. I said, how much? And he told me. And I said, I don't love my mother that much. <laughs> It just kind of slipped out of my mouth. I didn't intend to say that. And of course, a number of people who were with me had known my parents, and there were a few gasps in the group, you know? It's again one of those things I go back, and my mother would say, David, why do you say those things? And I go, you know, I, I don't know, Mom, but it, it gets a laugh. And you know, what can I say? It gets a laugh, you know? But I think back of that all the time. It still comes back to me. You know? I don't love my mother that much. The price was too high. But you know, what the scriptures speak about today is the price of love. We tend to think of love as being free and easy. You know, I think of the couples who I have prepared for marriage, somewhere over a 1,000 in the 45 years I've been a priest. And, you know, there have been more than a few times I've looked at them and thought, oh, you are clueless. You are so clueless. You don't realize what it's going to cost you. There's a price to loving. You know, most of you who have been married for a long time know what I'm talking about. You have to give something up in order to love. You know, one of the things is we have to change the way we think. That's probably the most important of all. Instead of thinking in terms of I, me, and mine, I have to think in terms of we, us, and ours. And you know, that's a huge change. It really is, and it's going to cost. It means I have to give up some of what I want for what is best for us. And that's true again and again and again. Those of you who are parents know what I'm talking about. You know, there's a price to loving these kids. 
You know, it isn't just as one father was, <laughs> as I was setting up, I went back and the little one was there. She's what, two? And dad yawned as I walked by. I, I don't think I inspired that. <laughs> but he yawned as I walked by and I, and I said, I turned to the, I said, you kept your daddy up last night. He said, yeah, we were up three times. You know, there's a price to pay. And then, of course, that phase passes, and then there's all the other anxiety about how things are unfolding in their life. And then you find yourself sleepless again when they're out late beyond curfew, and, you know, it never ends. You pay a price to love. There's a price. And that's what Jesus is talking about in the gospel. You know, last week we heard Jesus say, who do people say that I am? He asked the question of his disciples. Did they get it? Did they figure out yet who he was? You know, they had been with them now for a while, and what were they thinking about him? And Peter says, you are the Christ. You are the anointed of God in English or the Messiah, if you want to use the Hebrew word. You're the one that God has sent. You're the one we've been waiting for. And Jesus says, yes. And let me explain what that means. That's part two. That's this Sunday. That he came to reveal the Father's love. And the way he would reveal that would be by giving himself away over and over and over again giving himself away in love to anyone who came to him, and in the end, giving himself completely in love on the altar of the cross. That was the price he would pay. He came not to be some sort of military leader, not some sort of monarch that rules in splendor, but one who would give himself to show us the meaning of love, because that's what human beings were made for. You and I were created so that God would have someone to love. That is the primary reason for our existence, is to be loved by God. And hopefully, that love will transform us in a way that we, in turn, become people of love as well. That we find our true worth not by what we gain in life, but what we give away in terms of not just money, but time and talent. What we give away in terms of ourselves, of learning how to change the way we think, to think as the Lord Jesus does, to take on the mind of Christ and to live love as he taught us because that's the only way we truly find our value in this world. The one who loves their life in this world, who clings to it, who refuses to give it away, loses it. They become nothing. And yet the one who gives their life away becomes everything. No, he reminds us again that the reason we exist is to be loved. The reason we exist is to love. And it is in that that we find our true value and worth. We celebrate that once more as we celebrate the self-giving of the Lord Jesus who gives himself not just for us, but to us in love so that you and I can become all that we were created to be in God. Today we celebrate that. You now we celebrate how much we are loved we celebrate again what price the Lord has paid for us because there was no price that was too high. There was no price that was too high. He loved us that much, that he was willing to give himself for us and to us in hopes that you and I who gather to celebrate that love, to bask in that love, to glory in that love, will in turn go out there to live that love in a way that will transform this world. In the end, my sisters and brothers, we gather to celebrate our value and to find our value in living the love 
we celebrate here. Amen.